G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel Ecology Insights. I'm Lachlan McRae and in this video I'm going to show you how to optimise the settings on ultrasonic recording devices such as Titley Scientific's and Abat Swift. Although these settings will apply to whatever brand of ultrasonic recorder you use such as the SM4 BAT or the AudioMoth. Before we get into things, I firstly want to give a brief explanation on what an ultrasonic recording device actually is. These devices record the ultrasonic echolocation calls of microbats. Ultrasonic means above the human hearing range, which is typically above 20 kilohertz, and echolocation refers to the technique that microbats use to navigate their environment and hunt for prey and they do so by emitting ultrasonic sound signals. With that out of the way, let's get into it. You firstly want to turn the device on and then click the settings icon. Trigger settings. The trigger settings determine what audio parameters need to be met before the device will start recording. Sensitivity. The sensitivity setting essentially determines how loud a sound needs to be to trigger recording. This is one of the more tricky settings to optimize and I recommend just leaving it on the default value of 16. Minimum frequency. The minimum frequency should be set to the lowest calling bat species that you want to record. The lowest calling bat here in Australia is the white striped freetail bat, and it calls as low as 10 kilohertz. However, if you're only interested in threatened species, you could set the minimum frequency to the lowest calling threatened species, which is the yellow bellied sheath tail bat that calls as low as 17 kilohertz. Maximum frequency. The maximum frequency should be set to the highest calling bat species that you want to record. The highest calling bat here in Australia is the golden tip bat and it calls as high as 170 kilohertz. However, since there are no other sounds above 170 kilohertz, you can get away with setting it higher than that without the risk of another sound triggering recording. I typically set the minimum frequency to 11 kilohertz and the highest frequency to 200 kilohertz. The minimum event determines how long a sound needs to be before it will trigger recording. I've previously set this value to two milliseconds. However, I've found that back calls that can be reliably identified are typically above three milliseconds and a lot of unwanted sounds such as insects can be removed if you choose three milliseconds instead of two milliseconds. Therefore, I'm now setting this value to three milliseconds. Some identifiable bat calls will be missed with a three millisecond trigger, such as the golden tip bat and some high clutter calls of other species. But I've found that will only be a small portion of calls and ones that might not be useful for certain ID anyways. One scenario where I would choose two milliseconds or even one millisecond instead of three milliseconds is inside small caves or buildings because bats will produce their very short duration high clutter calls in those environments. The trigger window determines how long the device will record once triggered. I personally set this to 1.5 seconds because that still allows for a few quieter pulses that wouldn't normally trigger recording to still be recorded without making recordings unnecessarily long. File type. WAV allows for full spectrum recordings and is the industry standard, so choose WAV files over zero crossing. Sample rate. All you need to know about the sample rate is that it determines the frequency range that you can record. The highest frequency that you can record will be half of the sampling rate. The downside is that a higher sampling rate consumes more storage space, so you don't want to set the sample rate higher than you need. The highest calling bat in Australia is the golden tip bat and it calls up to about 170 kilohertz, but typically lower than 160 kilohertz. So a sample rate of 320 would be appropriate if you want to record that species. However, its calling frequency is so high that its calls only travel about five meters. 
so ultrasonic recording isn't actually an appropriate survey technique for that species. Therefore, I typically ignore the golden tip bat and set the sample rate to 192, which allows me to record up to 96 kilohertz, and that's high enough to capture all other bats that occur here in New South Wales. Max file length. This determines the maximum length each recording file can be before a new file is created. The more of a bat call sequence you can see would typically result in you being able to identify it more easily. However, having files excessively large can be problematic for automatic call identification and for viewing convenience within analysis software such as Anabat Insight. If the max file length value is so long that most files contain many bat species, then this won't be ideal for automated analysis with Anabat Insight decision trees because the average metric value for the file will not be suitable. Or if you are using a per pulse decision tree, then you will get an overwhelming and inconvenient amount of bat species labels on a single file. Additionally, in analysis software, you want to be able to zoom in on a file a sufficient amount to be able to make an ID while still being able to see most of the file so you don't have to waste time scrolling across. For these reasons, I would consider a max file length anywhere between 6 to 15 seconds to be reasonable. I personally use 10 seconds. Division ratio. Leave this on the default value of 8. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it helpful. I'm considering making future videos on how to analyze microbat calls as well as how to appropriately deploy an ultrasonic recording device. So if those topics sound interesting to you, please let me know down below in the comments. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.